Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic. In this show, we are going to be answering your questions that you've been leaving down in the comment section below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Now, I pulled out a few questions. Should we get right to it? Without further ado, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, first question is from Daniel. They say, hi guys, going on from the question of the other week about a specific downhill bike, why don't the pros grab bottles filled with cement from a soigneur for the descent and then toss them when they get to the bottom? No one would do that, it makes no sense. Wasteful. Yeah. Filling your bottles with cement, or they're just gonna do that before every single... What do you just carry a cement mixer in the team truck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then, and then just... Every single descent. There's it a lot of descent. It just seems very impractical, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I mean, it might get really desperate times and that's the difference between winning and losing a race, then we uh, might see something similar happen. The but other I have thing, a feeling uh, it's not gonna happen. The other thing I just thought of is if they get the heavy cement bottle for the descent, chuck it, well they haven't got any drinks, they have to then get another bottle at the descent. It's just not happening. No, no. I feel like the teams don't have <clears throat> enough staff. They'll have to have a building site <laughs> Will builders come with them yeah. to mix the cement and put it in the bottles? Right, okay, next question is from Attila. You go. Um, Hi GCN, I have a question that I simply can't find the answer to. I bought a road bike with flat bars because it was much cheaper, but I simply can't get in an aero position that I can hold for more than five minutes. Can you help me with that? I think we can. Yeah, well my first um, bike was actually a flat bar bike. Um, I can't remember why, but yeah. um, I basically converted it. I say I, my dad, converted it, <laughs> <laughs> bought some drop handlebar bikes, changed the handlebars, and yeah, it's pretty simple. It's quite an easy conversion to do, I think, yeah. especially if your dad does it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it makes a lot of sense. It's not really, other than you have to buy the STI levers, it's not a huge upgrade to make. Mm. You can buy the handlebars relatively cheap, you can buy second-hand parts. And I think getting into that road bike position is really going to help you be more aerodynamic and speed up your Definitely. riding. You do also have the option of an aero bar going on the yeah. straight handlebar though. You can put like tri bars on, bars. yeah. Um, um, but it the, looks a bit weird. If you aren't that comfortable in doing the bars yourself or swapping them, you can always take them to bike shop. I'm sure they'll be more yeah. than happy to do that for you as well. So yeah, there are a few options yeah. there. Uh, and just quickly actually, if you can't get comfortable in a position that you can hold for a while, I think it's a case of practice. You've got to practice mm. riding in that position and build up a little bit of strength in your core. Maybe Definitely. a little bit of stretch in to ease your back off a bit. A bit of core work as well. Yeah. Um, right, next question is from Fog Rider. Oh, a long question this one. So they say, I follow on to the question about getting water in the bike. My Zip 303 carbon wheels get water in them when I'm washing the bike. I think it's a substantial amount of water because I can hear it sloshing around. Manufacturers say they are prepared to drill holes in the rims, but it's going to take six to eight weeks in order to get the wheels back to them. It seems pretty easy enough to drill the holes myself. Do we advise against doing this as a DIY job? Do we have any words of caution? And they're saying that they have been able to remove a bit of the water by taking the valve out and stuff like that, but it's, it's not really a, it's a, a proper way. Is there any risk of the spokes rusting? And basically, what's our advice on this? Yes and no? Yeah, I'm on the same page as you, yes and no. Yeah. It is possible um, to do this kind of job yourself, but I don't feel like a, I could advise people to start drilling holes into their own wheels, especially if they're a carbon fiber wheel, which is clearly under like a warranty still, mm. because doing something like that is gonna invalidate your warranty. And I mean, they're zipped through three wheels. They are nice wheels, you do not want to. You don't want to get it wrong, do you? You, want it, you don't want to drill it and then it ruin the whole wheel and it not be usable or yeah. I don't know. Um, so I, I feel your frustration. It's yeah. a problem that happens a lot on carbon fiber wheels. In the past, on an old set of my own rims, I have drilled a small hole to fix this issue, but that was when I couldn't give it back to the manufacturer because they were really old. I would be patient, wait, get the wheels back to the manufacturer, be worth the let them do the job properly, and um, yeah, patience, I guess, yeah. is the answer to this. Yeah. Right, next question, Marilyn, what we got? Next one is from Fernando. Hey, Ollie and Alex, how much protection does 3M protective film, aka helicopter tape, really give? I'm pushing the limits of tyre clearance on my carbon fibre canyon in flight between the chain stays, and I was curious if you'd be able to test it out. Down tube stone flicks are no big deal in my experience. Um, well, I feel like we don't need to test this out because it's, it's a protective tape. It's designed specifically yeah, for that. Yeah, you'd hope it would work. It can be used on bikes. So, are you familiar with this helicopter tape? Like the Not, I've seen, no, I haven't seen this helicopter tape, yeah. but I've seen like protective films yeah. on bikes. Yeah, yeah, so it's that principle. It's just a clear tape, slightly thicker to offer 
protection from like damage to the paintwork mm. and stuff like that. So if it's protecting the down tube from stones flicking up, it sounds like it's perfect to put on the area where you're concerned that the tire might be a bit close and dragging like stones through the frame. Yeah. So I think we need to test it out and I, mean, I would advise on trying it out. If you're really worried, can you not just put two layers of it on? Would that give it a bit extra protection? Yeah, I mean, I if there's know. enough clearance for that. Yeah. Um, put the tape go. on the areas that you want to protect the bike. Job done. Simple. Easy. Uh, Matt, Armistead, high GCN. If you have a very strong tailwind, would riding in a more upright position be faster than riding in a more aerodynamic position? My thinking is, is that your body is going to catch the wind and make you go faster. Um, there's a few ifs and buts with yeah. this question. Do you, do you want to share your thoughts on it first? I mean, I think it makes sense. You would be faster if there's more surface area. Yeah, pushing you along. Yeah, but then I've never actually been in that situation and gone, oh, I've got a tailwind. <laughs> Go like this. Um, yeah, I can't say I've ever actually tried it no. out specifically, but... And I've never seen a pro really do it. No, well, the, the reasoning behind this, I feel, is uh, once your riding speed is above the speed of the tailwind, mm. the, then there's no point in sitting up because if you if the wind's going 30 kilometers an hour and you're traveling 40, you're effectively still got a 10 kilometers an hour wind hitting you. Yeah, so okay. then you need to start getting into be more aerodynamic mm. again. If you're riding at 15 kilometers an hour and you've got a 30 kilometer tailwind behind, you sit up like a parachute. It's going to help you speed help speed you up. Um, exactly. God, all the burning tech questions we answered. I know. Here. Tailwind, sit up, go faster. <laughs> Um, last question is from Carlos, what they got to say. Hi guys, on the chain waxing video, um, Ollie said that one of the advantages of waxing your chain instead of lubing it was that the wax will go into the small pins and the rollers. If you just submerge your chain in a regular drip on lube, will it go as deep as the wax? Will it be as efficient as the wax? Oh, right, little deep dive here, because mm. me and Ollie are big into waxing chains at um, We've been nerding out. Yeah, on it. I'm not I'm not in on the this waxing trend yet. Oh, we are such a pair of losers talking I've, about yeah. this stuff. Um, right, <laughs> super simple principle: the wax that you submerge your chain in, you heat it up. It goes from effectively a solid to a really thin, runny liquid. You put your chain in. All of the wax, because it's so thin and runny, works its way into all of the little gaps. Fantastic. Now, if you were to do the same thing with a container of normal chain lube it isn't in a really thin state. So it's not gonna work its way into the gaps in quite the same way. Mm -hmm. But the big difference here is that when you remove your chain from heated wax, the wax then cools to form mm -hmm. a solid, so it stays in place. And it's not easy to work its way out of the gaps. The normal lube that you haven't heated up and hasn't gone any thinner or thicker, well, it can work its way out the chain just as easy as it worked its way in. And um, normal drip-on type lubes tend to be a little bit stickier and they're going to attract a little bit more dirt. You know your wax. <laughs> you're going to have to do um, wax in your chain soon. Yeah. Keep up with the trend. Yeah, you're going to have to. I'm fine with normal lube. <laughs> ah, all right. Um, right, that was it. Last question from this week's GCN Tech Clinic. Hope you found that helpful. I apologise if we haven't answered your question yet, but be persistent. Next Get them week, in the maybe. comments down below and. Um, well, yeah, there's always next week. Yeah, keep there's leaving the question until we answer it, basically. Just there's always next week. We do, <laughs> we do it every week. Right, see you later. Bye.